So I'm making this video because I've been asked a lot about my recording setup, and I thought that it might be kind of fun to showcase some of the instruments and recording tips and tricks I used on time, along with some of my newer stuff. First, I've got my keyboards. The lower one here is modeled off some of the older Roland keyboards from the 80s, and has a pretty nice mix of modern and old school sounds. I've got my electric guitars and basses, there's my general mixing station, my vocal microphone, my acoustic guitars and bass, and of course my amp. A lot of people have asked me in the past how I go about writing songs, and typically I approach it from one of two directions. In some cases, I'll create the music first, usually a really rough keyboard mock-up, just to see how various sections flow together. It kind of makes for these really cheap-sounding variations of songs, but it's super helpful for getting ideas down quickly and seeing how it all sounds as one piece. After I get all the instruments written, I record them as real instruments and start working on a rough vocal melody. Sometimes I'll have a key set of lyrics in mind and I'll need to make the song around that. Other times I won't have any lyrics at all until the music comes first. Usually by the time I finish the melody, I've got a pretty solid idea of how the song sounds and feels, and I can work on adding vocals that fit the theme and that go along with the overall feel of the song. So there's two different play styles I usually use on acoustic guitar. Either I'm doing a more rhythmic strumming style with a pick, or I'm doing more of a quiet finger picking that usually sounds a bit more warm or subdued. I use the position of my playing and my microphone to sort of separate these tonally, with a close mic for the soft, intimate sound, and the mic a bit further away for the harder, more intense playing. When I'm editing my acoustic tracks, I tend to do a bit of double tracking to give it a fuller, more ambient tone, and I found that that, along with a bit of more old-style reverb, can give it a really nice, natural sound with just a bit of edge to it. My bass playing is actually pretty straightforward. I usually play the softer bass parts with just my pointer and middle finger, though I do use a pick for the more intense rockish segments. When it comes to the actual recording, the setup is probably one of the more basic parts. Generally speaking, it's just a direct line into my audio interface. And then after everything is recorded, I can work on the EQ and make sure no parts sound too loud, along with adding a bit of ducking to make sure the low end doesn't get too overpowering with the kick drum. The setup that I use for recording drums is actually a little bit strange, because with the exception of an old rock band set, I don't actually own a full drum kit. Since I still wanted a more realistic playing style, rather than just use drum loops, I'll actually play out the various sections on pressure pads. This runs into my mixing setup, where I can tweak the individual pieces of the drum kit and get a sound that's anywhere from a really raw folk kit to a much more modern rock setup. Electric guitar is probably my second favorite thing to record, just behind vocals. I feel like it's one of the areas where you can really put the most emotion behind. Obviously there's dynamic range, but there's also a lot of room for experimentation with various effects or unusual playing styles. As you may have seen before, I have quite a few electric guitars, and they each have their own strengths. There's the Fender Stratocaster, which in addition to being my first guitar, is the only guitar I own with a single coil pickup, which gives it a much cleaner and less dense sound. The Schecter 7 string is on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, and in addition to having an extra low string, is usually used for much heavier metal songs. However, it can still work surprisingly well for slightly fuzzy clean chords. There's my Kofi Custom Mirror Body Guitar, which is technically not mirrors and is actually made of highly polished aluminum and has a much more raw metallic twang to it. There's the Manson MB1, which is a MIDI touch screen for controlling effect pedals, along with a built-in sustainer pickup that allows you to play notes without having to pick them, creating sort of a sound like control feedback. And lastly, there is my ESP, which has the all-around fullest tone and is also my go-to electric for rhythm guitars. Most of my electric guitar is recorded from my tube amp, along with my SM57 microphone, which can usually be used for much more grungy sounds, but I found it works really nicely for smooth, clean tube tones as well. There's actually a lot more electric guitar in my songs than it might sound like. Even songs like Price have some lightly distorted electric guitar chords later on in the song, sort of as a way of adding a bit more warmth and grit, without being too invasive. For the more intense sections of songs, like The End of Storm, I usually play fairly high up on the neck of my guitar with a bit of higher gain on my amp. It's not especially common to play in that style, but I've found that I like the tone enough so I feel like the weirdness is worth it in the end. So even though I said that vocals are probably my favorite thing to record, they're also my least favorite thing to have to go back and edit afterwards. In addition to sort of feeling weird hearing my own singing, most microphones tend to pick up a very exaggerated mid-range on my voice. It's extremely helpful for the quiet parts of the song, but can make the louder parts a bit challenging to mix. Since every song has a different tone to it, there's a lot of trial and error on exactly what frequencies need to be limited or brought down for the vocal to sound human and smooth, but still to be audible over all the other instruments. This process usually means I'll go through about 15 to 20 iterations of a song just for vocals alone. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of harmonies, which is largely because of the years and years of choir I took back when I was in school. In pretty much any given song, there's usually two or three harmony lines that just don't make it, usually because they make the song sound a bit too busy or over the top. Well, you can always make all your songs choir songs. Yeah, just make like full 30-person 
30 person vocal ensembles. <laughs> Working on the mixing or effect work of a song is probably one of the most interesting parts of production in my opinion. There's a lot of ways to include less common effects like the reverse piano or sort of obscure sounds that on their own might sound a bit like the misfits of music, but in the context can actually sound really, really great. Things like an especially thick reverb or gritty distortion can sound kind of messy on their own, but when you add them on top of a very clean mix, they can sometimes add a bit of extra depth and make the song feel a bit more like a high quality recording of a real group playing live rather than one guy recording everything in a converted office. One of the things I'll toy around with a lot in my songs is getting sort of an analog tape distortion sound, which is basically just combining the high quality recording with a more gritty, slightly warped tone from an old real real tape recorder. The older machines tend to saturate certain frequencies more than others, and so you can get a really nice hybrid of a modern and a more vintage sound. So yeah, that's a little bit of insight into my room studio along with some of the preferences I have for recording and writing. Thanks very much for checking it out. Feel free to check out my main music playlist, which should have an annotation somewhere over there, assuming I remember to add one in, and I will see you all soon for my next song.